Wi-Fi is evolving and the alphabet soup of names that Wi-Fi standards have been known by are all about to change. Hi, I'm Chris with the Mobile Internet Resource Center here to give you an update on the state of Wi-Fi. Now, Wi-Fi, that you know, common simple word that we all use to refer to local wireless networking, behind the scenes is actually made up of a series of technical standards from the um, IEEE, the Institute of Electro Electronic and Electrical Engineers, and the standards are the 802.11 standards. You know, nothing that normal people really need to know but, well, when you're shopping for routers and stuff, that's how you end up comparing them. So does your router and your phone support 802.11b or 802.11g or maybe it's AC? Um, those have been the way that wireless standards have been referred to. And, well, as, they, as Wi-Fi has evolved and gotten faster and better, you needed to know that 802.11ac is significantly better than 802.11n. Ah, confusing. So to solve this, before next year's rollout in 2019 of 802.11ax, the next major technical standard for Wi-Fi, the Wi-Fi Alliance, the industry consortium that defines what it means to call yourself Wi-Fi, is deciding to simplify these names, getting rid of that alphabet soup of letters, and instead, well, next year 802.11ax is instead going to be called Wi-Fi 6. And this will make it very easy for your phones and your computers and stuff when they connect. They'll show your Wi-Fi signal strength and maybe a little 6 up in the corner indicating you're talking to a Wi-Fi 6 compatible uh, hotspot. And then, well, just to keep things simple, they're retroactively renaming 802.11ac to be Wi-Fi 5 and 802.11n to be Wi-Fi 4. So those are the um, technical standards that are most likely to be found out there. There's still 802.11b and g and all those, you can unofficially refer to them as Wi-Fi 2 and 3 and whatnot, but those aren't really around much anymore. So the official names is now Wi-Fi 4 is 802.11n, Wi-Fi 5 is 802.11ac, and Wi-Fi 6 is next year's 802.11ax. So the names are getting simpler, that's great. But what is coming on the technology front? What is new in 802.11ax that makes it better than the 802.11ac that is in uh, most of the, uh, the least current flagship devices of various sorts. So there's a couple new technologies coming in 802.11ax. The most interesting stuff behind the scenes um, is really focused on improving performance when networks are congested. So if you bring up your Wi-Fi device and you scan for networks and you'll see 30, 40, sometimes if you're in like a public place, you might just see page after page of Wi-Fi networks that it's detecting near you. Um, that's a lot of local congestion. They're all talking on the same limited set of channels. And even if your own private network is hardly any traffic on it, you might be going dog slow just because there's so much other wireless signal in the air. So 802.11ax is designed to give real world improvements in those sort of congested conditions over 802.11ac, the current Wi-Fi standards, probably about four times faster and maybe even more when there's a lot of local network congestion around. It's doing this with a lot of stuff happening behind the scenes. Some of the cooler things are using the multiple antennas to aim the signal instead of broadcasting in all directions at once, but it can actually, the hotspots can aim the signal directly at your phone rather than broadcasting broadly or directly at your laptop. Um, doing more encoding to allow more devices to talk on the same channels at one time without interfering with each other, and so on. So it's a really nice improvement, for particular for people who are going to be out in public areas and sharing public Wi-Fi networks. Um, so when can you get it? What do you need to, to do to jump on top of getting Wi-Fi 6? Well, first off, you really shouldn't... You, this is good to know that it's coming, but you don't need to rush. The standard is just being finalized in 2019. Uh, they'll come up with a certification and testing process of what something needs to be comp prove itself compatible to be able to label, be labeled and sold as Wi-Fi 6. So start looking next year for routers and hotspots and, and phones and anything else to be labeled as Wi-Fi 6 compatible. It's going to take a while, but if you really want to be on the cutting edge, as of the end of 2018, some of the very first pre-standard super premium home 802.11ax, they don't even have the Wi-Fi 6 name yet, uh, routers are starting to come to market, but well, there's no 
phones or tablets or laptops to talk to them yet. So it's kind of a chicken and egg problem. So for most people, unless you want to be on the cutting edge, just wait. It's going to percolate through the market. It will take several years, but start looking for seeing that Wi-Fi 6 compatible um, badge and logo and feature in the spec sheet, and that'll guarantee that you'll have the best possible performance in the future as this technology spreads. Now there's one other cool new technology that's coming to the Wi-Fi world, and roughly in the same time frame, it's called a WPA3. This is Wireless Protected Access third generation. So whenever you type in a password to join a Wi-Fi network, that's using the WPA technical standard behind the scenes. And WPA2 has been out for about a dozen years now, and it's required for all Wi-Fi devices to support it. Um, and it's still really mostly secure. There's a few very advanced um, hacks that have proven to get through WPTA, WPA2 security. But for the most part, if you're typing in a password on a Wi-Fi network, nobody can eavesdrop in on you between you and the router. It's pretty darn secure. But, well, 12 years, security professionals have figured out better ways to do encryption and better ways to protect things. And so WPA3 is rolling out starting right about now and into next year. Um, as a new security standard, you'll see that starting to show up on hotspots and routers as a security option and hopefully more and more devices will support it. And the particularly cool thing that WPA3 does is that even when you're not entering in a password on a network, if the network supports WPA3 and your device does, even if it's a public network with no password involved, it will still encrypt your private session, which for people connecting to public networks, like a lot of us nomads, um, having your network, your personal connection to the router encrypted adds a lot of safety because in WPA2 world and earlier, if you're on a public network, other people on that network can very easily listen in and eavesdrop on you. So WPA3, even if you're not using a password, particularly on public networks, huge improvement. Again, it's going to take years before WPA3 is widely out there, but at least now you know it's on your radar. You can start looking for WPA3 compatibility, looking for Wi-Fi 6 compatibility, probably going to start really seeing it towards the end of 2019 becomes more important I'd say it becomes kind of a must-have feature to look for in 2020. So. It's going to take a while for this new technology to roll out into the market. For the most part this is all going to be new hardware upgrades. So for a marina that's invested and in putting in hot spots all over the place um, it might not be until they get around to doing their next major hardware refresh. So it could be years and years before some of these places upgrade to Wi-Fi 6 hardware. WPA3, depending on the how old the, the, the hardware is, may or may not be com available via a software upgrade, but Wi-Fi 6 is almost certainly a hardware upgrade. So it's gonna take a long time for this stuff to percolate out in the market. It'll just start to show up as a feature on new installations primarily. Um, and again, you know, it's uh, you know, we're, we're 802.11 AC has been out for years and years now and still very rarely seen. It takes a long time for this to percolate out into particularly public wide area installs. So no rush. So um, it all depends on how quickly they're getting around to refreshing their hardware. And a lot of these mobile companies um, are on a slow refresh cycle. Uh, it could sometimes take them years before the you know the things that you see in Best Buy versus the things that you see you know more designed for mobile users. Um, I do know that Wi-Fi Ranger tells us they're starting to look into WPA3 um, for sometime in 2019, um, and we have no estimates on Wi-Fi 6 from any of these manufacturers, but would look probably 2019, 2020, just trying to find, let them come up with the answers because they are all dependent on chipset suppliers. The chipset suppliers then sell to uh, wireless board manufacturers that then sell to companies like Wi-Fi Ranger and Pepwave and things have to percolate down through that whole supply chain before they even can consider when their options and costs might be to start offering these sort of upgrades. So that's on your long-term radar. You know what's coming next on Wi-Fi. It's great to see Wi-Fi technology evolving. Cellular evolves so fast, so it's good to see Wi-Fi making some strides forward as well. And this is uh, hopefully catching you up.